G'day, Tiny here from Off Tap Broom. And that last take of this video took way too long. I'm not one for editing, so I'm not going to edit that. I'm just going to have another beer and shoot a new one. Okay, I started off with some BS about making a yeast starter, which I did just pitch that yeast. You can't see it, but it's just started fermenting on top. And that was like 10 minutes ago. So I've got to get the back of the fridge. I get that going in the fridge. That's that yeast. That yeast starter will ferment for a couple of days and I'll feed two fermenters with it. So my $4 packet of yeast now cost me $2 because I'm doing two batches with it. I'm not getting into um, yeast washing just yet. I will be I will be doing that this Christmas. I'll be having a go at it. Once I'm confident doing it and I understand the process, I will then shoot a video and help you guys understand it. Um, a lot of good videos out there at the moment on it. Um, Gash, Gash Slug, uh, he's on my page uh, as a subscriber to me. He, I've watched his videos and been corresponding with him, and you know he's been talking talking to me about it. So yeah, that's pretty good. But what point on this video was kegs, Cornelius, ball lock kegs, pressure testing. How do we pressure test? How do we make sure that we're not losing gas? Even a slow leak is still gonna cost you. I think my um, 6.2 kilo, whatever it is, my, my keg on legs, my 6.2 kilo one, to uh, exchange that at a home brew store costs nearly $60. To have it filled at another home brew store who does filling, Cost nearly seventy dollars. Now, to do swap and go, where I take my empty one and I take somebody else's uh, new keg, uh, somebody else's full keg, it's just a big swap and go sort of thing. But as you know, kegs, any any, um, I say kegs, I mean um, gas tanks. Uh, any gas tank has a number on it, a date for checking for pressure uh, for testing. Sorry, and testing costs money. So you might take your brand new keg in that you just bought off a shop and it's run out and you've only had it a year. You might take that into a shop and exchange it for one that is going out of date in a year. So it's already past seven years or however long they last before they need to be tested. And you've got that one and okay, that's all right. I'll just take it back and swap it. But then your local shop closes down. Then you're stuck with a keg that you have to then a uh, keg a gas tank that you have to then go and pay for pressure testing. So um, swap and go at your own risk. If it's cheap and you're willing to take that risk and you've got a lot of opportunities to go and swap anywhere, well then that's fine. But if you're only doing it from one little store and that's the only one around you, um, yeah, do it at your own risk. Especially if you're, you're outlaying three hundred and fifty dollars or or you know for, for that tank. I mean, anyhow, but what I did was I went and I found a fire extinguisher place. They fill fire extinguishers and they are more than happy to fill CO2 brewing kegs. So my advice on CO2 is look up fire extinguisher refilling or servicing places. They will do it. I think it cost me $23 to fill the same keg that cost me nearly $70 to fill. So little tip there from Tiny. Tiny's interesting tip. Um, yeah, find, go and get a, a fire extinguisher place and uh, ring them and then ask them. Like, I've got a, I've got this, blah, blah, blah. Can you fill it? Yep, yeah, no worries. And it'll be out there, like, it'll be cheap. It'll be cheaper, a lot cheaper. Anyhow, pressure testing kegs. I was losing uh, gas hand over fist, hand over whatever, but I was just losing gas, like lots of it, bottle over bottle. And I changed rings, and I changed um, these rings on here. Those ones there, I changed that one because the gas, and you know, I, I was swapping out my disconnects, swapping all those out, and I just could not find the leak in this system. Well, it was this keg. The other day, the leak uh, showed its head. It was this little thing, pressure relief not holding pressure under pouring pressure. It's a very, very slow bubble, but I picked it up. Took me long enough. That thing there cost me, oh, probably 
two kegs, I'd say, two gas tanks. Two, I've got a little gas tank also that I run in the fridge. I've also got a big gas tank, like big, big one. And I've got a medium sized one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that little thing there. So, if you think you're running out of gas, check everything. That's one thing I overlooked on, on this lid and probably a lot of other lids. So, yeah. Now, short story. Bought my first keg system, gas bottle, three kegs, three serviced kegs, as I was told, regulator from a home brew store. I uh, was told how to pressure check them at the store. He said, fill them with water, go home, and turn them upside down in a bucket with four bar on them, four bar of pressure in, in the tank. Okay, cool, I did that. My tanks were great. I think it took about two weeks, and my first 6.2 kilo gas bottle was empty. I then took all the kegs back to him and said, look, mate, this is not right. What's, what's going on here? I'm not paying for this. Uh, he then went and rebuilt the kegs in front of me, basically to just change a couple of O-rings, um, and then filled the gas bottle for me. So that was fine. That was just a lot of stuff around, but I learned a bit of stuff while, while that was happening. Um, I learned that you don't pressure check your kegs under like rush carbonation pressure, like four bar, um, or 400 kPa. You don't do it. All, all your, all your O-rings are pushed up by the pressure. Everything's pushed tight by the pressure. So nothing's going to come out. And if you fill your keg with water and add gas in it and turn it upside down and put it in water, you're not going to see any bubbles. You're going to see water coming out. So his advice to me was is absolutely wrong. Fill your kegs with what they sit on most in, 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 their, in their time, which is pouring pressure. Whatever you have your pouring pressure at. Um, mine is roughly 85 to 90 um, kPa or 0.8 bar um, or 12 psi, whatever. Uh, if, whatever. Whatever you use for your pouring pressure, that's what you pressure check your kegs with. And do not add water, because obviously water's heavier than the gas. If you turn it up and put it inside a bucket, you can't see water coming out into water. So, because the gas has gone to the top, obviously. So, yeah, fill your kegs with straight pouring pressure, put them in a bath, roll them around, wait for all the bubbles to come out from underneath the plastic. You know, the, if, you've got, if you've got plastic lifting up, you know, under here and, and under here, you're going to get bubbles coming out of there, but they're going to stop. They will stop. If you're fortunate to have a pool in your backyard, just put it straight down. You'll see what's going on. You'll see a constant stream or you'll see nothing. You know, you'll see what's leaking. You'll, you'll definitely see what's leaking. But yeah, so that little thing there, which is probably $3 to replace, cost me probably two gas bottles at $18 a refill or $13 a refill. So it cost me $26 already, and I found it. Luckily, I didn't have it on my big rig. I'll, we'll go for a walk out here. I'll show you the big rig through the mess. And then, oh, there's some washing and blah, blah. You know, I've got my little workshop. I've got my little, my little Daleks there. I've got three Dalek party kegs, a couple of spare kegs, and the big boy with the Harris rig on it. There's about 10 years worth of CO2 in that. Not really, but about, um, yeah. It's on, why is it on? There's about, um, yeah, probably five, worked it out, probably five years worth of gas in there, and it cost me $100 to fill. I mean, that's, that's pretty good, 20 bucks a year on gas. And that's just, that's my main, sort of, my main sort of jobby there. Um, if I was any good at editing, you wouldn't see all this walking around bullshit. I've got my full backup my keg on legs there, 6.2 kilo I think that is. Um, that's just been recently filled, so that's backup. And I've got my little my little one in there. All right. Quick tip on if you've got beer in your keg and you want to see if your keg is leaking gas, 
disconnect all other kegs on the gas line, bar the one in question. So I've disconnected that one. That's my one in, in question. Oh, that's my Pluto gun, if you know what Pluto guns are. My Pluto gun. Um, that's my keg in question. So, I've got my regulator there. Um, and it's showing me the pressure going in and the pressure of the bottle. So, what do I do? I turn that bottle off. And I come back in 10 minutes. If those needles have dropped, you have a leak in your system. Somewhere you have a leak. That is the easiest way to check your whole system. Uh, very simple, very simple. Uh, then we disconnect that keg. We can put that one back on. And there should be no, no pressure dropping. Nothing at all, nothing at all. So yeah, I'm confident that I can leave this gas on these kegs and not lose any gas. So, there we have it. I was thinking that I wasn't going to be able to do any more videos, but I'm procrastinating over having to do the dishes again. So, yeah, well, there we have it. Check your kegs, check your gas line. That stuff's important. Uh, we don't want to be caught on Christmas Day with no gas and nowhere to get gas. I mean, we can use bicycle pumps. We can also use... I don't know, many of you guys out there would have seen these for sure. Soda bulb goes in there. Little 16 gram or 8 gram soda bulb goes in there, screws up or pushes into that. When you screw that on, pressure goes in. Put that on. Two, two soda bulbs, maybe three soda bulbs will dispense a whole corny keg. You wouldn't want to carbonate with these because they're about $3.50 each, $4 each, the soda bulbs. So, very expensive way to carbonate. To carbonate, you'd need... Oh, you'd need a lot. But, if you had one of these carbonating caps on your bottle of soft drink, on your bottle of... Uh, a soft drink bottle full of beer, flat beer. Shake, 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 shake. Check, check, check. Perfect, hand in hand. Now, if any of you guys are smart, you'll know that this is a bicycle pump with one of these put on there. You can actually take that, uh, that is actually, if you look that brand up, that logo up, that is a bicycle pump. Um, it blew me out to know that. But yeah, you can get them on the net, you can get them from England, you can get them from America. Bicycle pump. One of those disconnects or connections. Screw it on, same thread as your bicycle pump. Done. Take away CO2, love it. So yeah, for Christmas guys, don't get caught with no CO2. For real, it's not gonna be good. I'm stocked up, I've got the G-Size gas bottle, I've got the 6.2 and the 1.8. I'm sweet, and two boxes of soda bulbs. I know on Christmas day, when the pubs aren't open, Tiny's house will be, and beer will be flowing. Alright guys, remember, beer makes you smarter.